All right, so we're going to learn about MMPA. Master Military Pay Account. I must warn you, this training is basic. This training is not intended for high-level pay experts or high-level MMPA experts. This training is intended for new CPPAs or junior pay clerks. We're going to cover two topics. All right. We're going to cover MMPA general information, and then we're going to learn how to read the MMPA. All right. So let's get to it. All right. Let's talk about MMPA in general. MMPA is a database that contains current and historical information pertaining to a service member's pay all leave and pay activity for active duty service members are recorded in the MMPA. The individual account contains current entitlements, deductions, payments, leave balance, collections, status information, and history. So what does that even mean? I read three paragraph that you could have read yourself. The best way I can put it is MMPA is a system that has all the information that you need to know about the service member pretty much in real time. All right, now let's talk about the purpose of MMPA. It records information necessary to compute the net pay due to a service member. It records factors relative to the member that are or have been or will be of pay determining or pay distributing nature. It ensures uniformity in application of rules and processing and provides prompt and accurate service to every service member. And it enables pay clerks to answer inquiries pertaining to a member's account. Let me tell you why MMPA is important. All right, first, it empowers you. It empowers you as a CPPA. It empowers you as a pay clerk, right? It helps you become independent and self-reliant. You don't have to depend on PSD for answers. You don't have to depend on service members for answers. You have access to all the information you need right there in front of you. Number two, it provides sailors more efficient and accurate service. We kind of touched on this on the purpose of MMPA but I wanted to emphasize this again, right? You can do your job a lot better. You can help sailors a lot better. Another reason why it's important is it improves communication. It improves communication with the sailor. You can answer the sailor promptly. It improves the communication with the chain of command. If the chain of command is inquiring about their sailors, right? You can answer the chain of command accurately. It improves communication with PSD. When you're inquiring with PSD, you know exactly what needs to be done based on what you see on MMPA. All right, and finally, you assist PSD. Everybody wins. Sailor wins, you win, chain of command wins, PSD wins. You assist PSD with a lot of their inquiries. A lot of the things that they answer, you can answer with MMPA. So you will decrease their email and tops traffic because a lot of CPPAs or PSs or YNs or whatever the case may be will email PSD with pay questions because they do not have access to MMPA. So everybody wins. So if you do not have MMPA, especially if you are designated as the CPPA, you are slipping get MMPA expeditiously. All right, so we're gonna continue on with general information. All right, we're gonna talk about verbs, groups, categories, FIDs, common action indicators, and data identifiers. All of this will help you read the MMPA. Eventually, we're gonna get to the reading portion of it, and these six things right here is gonna help you be able to read the MMPA proficiently. All right, so we're going to start off 
on verbs. There are many verbs. The verbs that we need to focus on, that we are training on, is J-J-A-A. -A. So here's a list of verbs. Pause it, read it, do what you need to do. But focus, the focus is on J-J-A-A. -A. When you think of J-J-A-A, -A, you think of M-M-P-A, right? M-M-P-A is synonymous for J-J-A-A. -A. Right. So pretty much is when somebody says, hey, can you check my MMPA to see if I got paid today? You're really going into the MMPA system and then you're going to type in the JJAA verb. All right. Also, as you can see, JJAA says DGMS slash MMPA inquiry. So essentially, JJA is an inquiry within the MMPA. Right. So when someone asks, can you check the, the MMPA? They're referring to JJAA, hence the name MMPA Inquiry. But we're gonna call it MMPA moving forward, all right, just for the sake of this training. Now let's talk about the six major breakouts that's referred to as groups. We'll start out with fixed. All right, so fixed contains data that is always present in every member's record or is used consistently during daily update processing. Then we got variable open. This group contains entries that are currently applicable to the member's record, but space is not reserved for these entries since they are only present when they are in effect. Futures. Whenever an action is known to be required at a specific time, an entry is established in the future group in the MMPA. Suspense, when an action cannot be processed completely without additional input, a suspense is established for the receipt of the required input. All right, leave an earning statement. Some actions that change the MMPA place an entry in this group to identify what the action was and when it was processed. Close, this group contains three types of data. These entries are differentiated from the fixed and variable open entries by a tack or a dash which appears besides the FIDs. We will talk about this later. I'll cover this again when we're reading the MMPA. The big thing is with closed is it no longer affects the future of the member's pay. All right, so let's talk about the group hierarchy. These groups are subdivided into sets of entries related to the same subjects, which are known as categories. The next level within a category is an entry, which is a detailed set of relative items known as format identifiers, FIDs. We'll cover that later. That's going to be a big part of this training. The entries in each category, when present, are designated and sequenced first alphabetically, then numerically by the FID. For simplicity of updating and searching a record, the fixed, variable open, and closed groups are further divided into 14 categories. The first letter of that FID is the category that it falls under, except for the entitlement FIDs. Entitlements are numeric. Today, we are training on entitlement, so you will see this here soon. All right, so here's a list of categories. Allotments, leave balance, collections, deductions, taxes, held pay, location, member ID, memoranda, payment, reenlistment, status, service dates, and entitlements. Like I said, entitlements will be numbers. Let's talk about the format identifiers, also known as FID. We mentioned this earlier, but now we're going to get a little bit more into it. A format identifier is a two-character alphanumeric code that identifies a particular item within a category in the MMPA. There are also certain FIDs which do not appear in the MMPA but are used exclusively to process transaction affecting MMPA. So for example, if you want to look up a member's BAH, you'll input 68, right? Two digits, it'll, it'll show the member's BAH and all the information you know about the member's BH, right? That's just an example of a FID. Here are more FIDs that you can look at. 
uh, feel free to pause it, uh, rewind it, screenshot it, utilize it as you need. Maybe some of y'all may need to study this, uh, but or you could just have it available where if someone asks you to check on their uniform allowance, you can just put this fit in, input this fit, and then boom, you see it right there. Moving on to common action indicators. Like right there, zero one to start it. For example, if you want to start somebody's BH, 6801. Right there, that means start the service member's BH. Be mindful you don't have capabilities to start BH on um, utilizing MMPA, uh, the JJA uh, verb, right? That's This is just inquiry. But you'll know when somebody started it based on what you see in the fit right that the whole fit line you'll see when it started on uh, you you'll see when it started or if it stopped or if it's a change or if it's correct or if it's a cancel right so common action indicator these are some common common action indicators right here start stop report change correct cancel increase decrease and resume all right data identifiers here's a list of data identifiers I will break this down when we start reading the MMPA. The two things that stick out to me on this list is the entitlement, TAC, Mike, Mike, right? Current month, mid month entitlement. Entitlement, TAC, November, Mike is entitlement for the next month, right? Or just entitlement, that is the current month total entitlement start date stop date those are some of the data identifiers that we will break down when we start reading the mmpa all right so you learned a little something about verbs groups categories fids common action indicators and data identifiers now you're about to understand why you learned those six things furthermore those six things are gonna help you understand what you're about to learn. That concludes the topic, MMPA general information. We are now about to proceed on the next lesson. All right, so once you log on, you're going to input JJAA, and that will take you to this screen right here. This is the JJAA inquiry screen. As you can see right there, you input the social, and then you input the FID at the request codes. You hit enter, and then it will take you to the matrix. It's crazy. The MMPA literally looks like the matrix, especially if you're a beginner. If you've never seen this before, it's going to look just like the matrix, right? It's going to have a bunch of numbers and it's going to be hard to understand. You're going to be just like Neo. But the good news is with all this training, you're going to be able to read the matrix. Everything is going to make sense to you. As you've seen earlier, we entered E that brings us to the entitlement page. The first thing we're going to learn how to read is the MMPA 
header information. We'll start out with the social. That is the social. The next block is the new request. If we want to switch up requests and go to a different fit, this is where we'll input the fits. The next block is print, right? Honestly, I've never seen this work. Uh, it probably worked a long time ago. I don't even know if this feature still works. Go ahead and try it, see if it works, but I use another method to print. The next block is the name. I've never seen this work. I've tried this. I've tried this out. I've never been able to put somebody's name and then it populated their information. Right. So the next block talks about how to navigate through this page. X to exit. PF8 or enter to move forward. PF7 to go backwards. The next block is the Privacy Act statement required by law. The information in MMPA is covered by the Privacy Act and can only be used for official purposes. So don't be nosy. Don't be going to MMPA looking up people's stuff that you have no business looking up. All right. The next block is the date of the MMPA indicates the date the MMPA was last printed. So if you have a printout of this, you'll know when it was printed. So let's say you had that printout sitting around for like a month. You look at it, you'll know exactly when you printed it. You'll know that it's probably been updated since you last printed it out. Now let's go to like the turquoise color portion of the MMPA header information. That first block right there is the member social. The second line is the member's name in five, the first five letters of the member's name. The second line is the member's pay grade. 2-2 two, two represents the member's pay grade. Look that up. Look, tell me what that member's pay grade is. That E represents what page are we looking at? We put entitlement. It brought us to this. As you can see, entitlement is one of the 14 categories. And in one of the 14 categories is going to come out numerically. Right? We'll walk you through that right now. The next block it's going to show up in green matrix matrix green is the what page of the MMPA or what page of M of this are we looking at? This is one of the six pages more of this. So this is just the first page, right? MJ represents the AF MPC match flag code, right? This is used to identify event transactions that have not been confirmed. The most common ones will be accessions and separation. The next block is LB, 3800, right? That is the paying ADSN. If the member is paid through direct deposit, it will show 3800, right? So everybody in 2020 should show 3800. I hope so. LC represent the member servicing ADSN. Normally, this ADSN, this is the ADSN of the PSD office that handles the member's account. SA, identify if the member is available for duty. SX, Sierra X-Ray, identifies the number of status that are open on MMPA. So as you can see, this member has one status that is open on MMPA. TK represents the date used for computing longevity for pay purpose. TU is the date of separation. In the case of regular officers, this should read 888888. Since the officer's commission does not expire in a specific time period. So based on that information, this is an officer. TH is the expiring term of service for enlisted personnel. This is the date that the current enlistment expires and should match the soft EOS date of the LOPG. That's another story. I'll tell you about the LOPG later, but this is the expiration of term of service if it's an enlisted, right? So this one says 0000, so we know this is an officer. If this was enlisted, it'll say something like 21. 0414, something like that. So we just covered MMPA header information. 
Now we're going to talk about the format identifier, also known as FIDs. The first FID we're going to learn about and break down is base pay. Basic pay 01 is the format identifier for basic pay. 01 is FID. We're going to break it down, and once we break this one down, it's going to set the foundation for most of the FIDs you're going to read. All right, so let's get started. Next thing you're going to see is entry open date. It's an 11 character date and code that identifies the date an entry was posted as open. Right? So 200824 represents year, month, date. 21 represents the cycle number or the update cycle number. 08 represents the working month or the work month. Two means it was done after mid-month. If it's reflecting one, it means it was done before mid-month. So basically, on August 24, 2020, we changed the basic pay rate for this member. Now let's talk about how they uh, updated this, right? So action C4, right? That means longevity c represents longevity meaning it happened because this person hit a certain amount of years or something and four as you learned earlier is one of your action indicators four means change so this be um this basic pay changed based on longevity the amount changed so start represents the effective date right so august 25th 2020 is the effective date for this basic pay this particular rate entitlement tech mm is mid-month this is how much base basic pay or base pay this service member is going to get in the middle of the month entitlement is the total entitlement of their base um, basic pay, right? This person is gonna get fifty-eight ninety and twenty cents for their basic pay. Entitlement tech and M is what they're gonna get next month. So MM Mike Mike represents mid month. NM represents next month. Now you know how to read a basic pay. One thing I do want to add is when it's closed out closed meaning it no longer affects the future pay of the service member right so we're going to look at the basic pay down here at the bottom right it's going to have a tack after zero one we already covered zero one but this one is going to have a tack after zero one that tack means this is closed this this sailor or this service member is no longer receiving this basic pay amount here's a a proof look look at the mid-month zero look at the entitlement zero look at the entitlement next month is zero that means that this no longer affects the sailor's future pay this particular rate is closed it used to be 5532 we now know that this person is receiving 5890 and 20 cents so we know that this person got an increase in rate. All right, so the next FID that we're going to learn about in the entitlement category is basic allowance for quarters, FID number 35. Learning how to read basic pay, the FID for basic pay, laid the foundation for every FID we're going to learn about. So there's going to be a lot of blocks on this FID that we're going to be familiar with, all right? First block, 35, that represents the FID that we're looking at. We already know that. We already know about entry open date. We already, we already know about action. We already know about start. We already know about mid-month um, entitlement and, and next month. We understand that already. The question you're asking yourself is, why is it so low? Uh, pretty much the best way I could tell you this, we need to start the 35 before we start the 68. And then the 68 is the BH. We'll get to that next. 
All right, so this block right here is NRTAC, D-E-P-N, NRTAC DEP, right? And it says zero. That means the number of dependents currently relying upon the member for BAQ purpose. So in this guy, in this person's case, it's zero without dependents. Now this one right here says uh, closest dependent for BAQ purpose. Right, this is the code on what generates the rate of the BAH, right? Um, this is gonna feed the BAH. So this one says R. R represents single, right? Um, this person is entitled to um, BAQ and ultimately BAH and it's single, right? There's a couple of stuff you're gonna see as well. If this says A, the member has a spouse. If it says child, the member has a child that they have custody of if this says is if it says i ma members married to another member without dependent rate um baq or partial baq if it says w the member is married to another member but they have a child so those are some of the examples that you're going to see on this block next block is quarter assigned uh, this says two two means not assigned if it was one, it means it is assigned. So this one is not assigned. The next one is quarter um, AQ, um, ADQ in the expressions by competent authority as to suitable government quarters. So this one is zero. That means it's not applicable. Don't have to worry about that. The next one, the last one is um, held indicator. All portions of the members pay being held. Uh, this one, there's a uh, number one, which represents pay held. All right, so now we'll cover basic allowance for substance, right? Uh, number 40, fifth 40. As you can see right here, it's gonna, we're going to go block by block as well. All right, but here's the thing. We already covered 40. We already covered um, entry, open date, uh, control code, action, start, entitlement right the biggest thing here is bas type that's the new thing here bas type what does that mean well in this person's case that's officer rations right there's several uh different ones which i will post right here boom all right those are the other bas types that's pretty much it for bas it's pretty repetitive from uh the last two uh fit that we just looked at except with the bas type all right, so the last FID that we are going to cover in the entitlement category um, is probably everybody's favorite for whatever reason, right? Um, basic allowance for housing, right? 68, that's the FID number, 68. So like I said earlier, reading these FIDs, they're repetitive. We already laid the foundation, so there's going to be a lot of these things that we're just going to skip through because you already understand what it means, but... Half of this basic allowance for housing, uh, we're going to train on because we've never covered it. All right, so let's get started. All right, so you already know what the FID means. You already know what entry open date. You already know. Actually, you know what? I have not covered the control code. So let me, let me cover this. All right, so control code, computer process and control code. Uh, this one says zero which represents open entry in mmpa you have different control codes one open mmpa entry suspended for indebtedness two closed entry that affects pay three entry used to correct an overpayment in prior pay period four entry used to correct an underpayment in prior pay period so this tells a story actually you know so this is a very important block this action block is very important as well. It also tells a story. This says G1, right? G represents PCS arrival. One represents start. So that means this BH started because the member transferred into the command. And then it goes right there. That's the day that started. That's how much the mid-month is. That's how much the total entitlement is. That's how much the next month is. We've already covered that, right? All right, so let's cover the next block, accompanied status. By definition, the sponsor status of an individual dependent when one or more dependents reside with the member in the local area of the member's duty station during their current or last overseas tour. 
All right, so this member is zero. That means a member who is unaccompanied and receiving single BAQ. The other two status is one and two. So here are one and two's definition right on your screen. Bam. All right, but this member is zero. The next block is zip code. Uh, pretty self-explanatory. The zip code where the member resides and the zip code where the member will receive their, their BAH rate. So if you look this up at the uh, BAH rate query inquiry, um, you put the zip code in, you're going to know exactly how much this member is supposed to receive and then make sure it matches what's on the MMPA. All right, so the next block is rent. All right, by definition, the actual amount of rent paid in the whole units. This says zero, right? It's always, actually, it usually says zero, if not always says zero for BH. I've never seen this have an amount on BH. I've only seen this on OHA, OHA, Overseas Housing Allowance, and I've seen the actual amount of rent that the service member is paying on the OHA, but I've never seen it on BH. So this should always show zero on BH. The next block is share, right? Is this member sharing, right? The number of people occupying a dwelling. This one says one, the other code is two and three, right? Um, two means sharing with one other person. Three means sharing with two other person. I've always seen this as one um, on BH as well. Um, I, if anybody else seen it different, let me know, but I've only seen this one. All right, so share. Next block is rent status, identifies the status in which the occupants are classified as to how they are renting. So this service member is renting. The other three codes is H for homeowner, O for other, S for single privatized housing. All right, the next block is percentage, percentage of BH without dependent rate to pay for privatized housing. This one is zero. The next block, block is protected rate. Uh, I don't even know what that means, to be honest with you. All right, so the last block is members closest dependent. We've already learned this. We've already previously covered this. So if you want to relearn it or you want to refresh, just rewind the video on that portion of the training and press play again, right? That's the beauty of this training. That's the beauty of this video. You can pause and press training whenever you like, right? But yeah, that concludes our training on entitlement and FIDs. And that wraps up our training for uh, MMPA for beginners, right? So to summarize, you should have learned MMPA general information and how to read entitlements on MMPA. Those are the two things you should, you should have accomplished during this training, right? You now have the basic knowledge on MMPA and you can continue to add on to that knowledge. All right, so the most important resource for this is the DJMS MMPA guide. That is your resource. That is your reference. Everything I learned about MMPA came from this guide, right? Everything that I needed to know about the MMPA, MMPA came from this guide. So use this guide. This guide is your best friend. This guide is the truth, right? It is the truth. This is basically what's gonna help you learn MMPA. The number two thing is experience is the best teacher. You're gonna have to get access, you're gonna have to log in, and you're, you're gonna have to do it. The, the best way to learn quickly is to utilize your own profile and navigate through the MMPA and using the MMPA guide as a reference, right? All right, so you are now Neo. You can dodge bullets, you can read the matrix, you just got to go ahead and uh, execute. All right, so stand by for more training. But in the meantime, keep fighting for your sailors and keep making a positive impact. Let me know if you have any questions. You can contact me anytime and I'll answer your question to the best of my ability. If I do not know the answer, I know where to find the answer and I can help you find that answer. All right, I'm out.